very much for having me. Um, I want to start by saying that right now we're in the middle of process and we're at a point in time where no, almost none predictions can be done. And it's really difficult to imagine what's going to happen next. Um, but uh, what uh, at the same time we see right now is uh, something that uh, is irreversible. And I agree with Fabian that um, after the war in Ukraine has started on February 24th, um, many things have changed and uh, the world will not be the same again. Uh, uh, Russia's position in the world also will not be the uh, same again. Uh, and we also don't really know what is the future of uh, Russia going to be. We don't know uh, what is the state of uh, foreign relations going to be look like. We don't even know uh, what domestically Russia will look like. So saying all that, um, we still know that um, uh, this uh, conflict is not uh, gonna end very soon. As we talk right now, there are meetings in Turkey between Russian and Ukrainian sides. Um, and um, of course, this is uh, a step towards uh, some kind of a ending of this horrible events that are you know, going on for uh, more than a month right now in Ukraine. But um, I'm still pretty skeptical about the uh, positive, uh, you know, consequence of uh, these negotiations, uh, because uh, at this point I don't see uh, that none of the I, I see that none of the parties that are participate in this uh, war have uh, intentions to end it. Um, if we put ourselves in uh, the shoes of uh, Ukrainian leadership, uh, they just cannot uh, give up. They just cannot uh, say that, um, you know, they want to end it as it is right now. Uh, if we want to uh, portray uh, what is the thinking in uh, the Kremlin, it will be the, the same. Uh, the Kremlin also doesn't want to stop it right now because there are no tangible, uh, you know, kind of bonuses that uh, the Kremlin can show to domestic audience and to international community that it's kind of gained out of this whole aggression. Um, so uh, I see that the situation right now is kind of stuck. Um, and uh, till um, Moscow, I mean, this is very uh, cynical and very uh, depressing, but uh, till Moscow will reach uh, some kind of tangible bonuses from its actions in Ukraine that it can portray to the domestic audience as um, something that it gained out of this uh, horrible event, uh, it will not stop. So um, uh, saying all that, um, I don't want to overestimate the level of other parties uh, that uh, you know might have some kind of effect on uh, the situation uh, on the ground. Of course, they can play uh, a role of mediator like Turkey right now, like some European countries. Uh, but other than that, uh, I don't see that uh, there is much influence in any country over, you know, thinking uh, in Moscow. Um, Moscow will not be listening uh, to the opinion of its partners, of its allies um, in uh, any, any country, uh, because uh, at this point, Russia has done too far and so much has been sacrificed. So, um, you know, many sanctions has been put on Russia that uh, its economy is in uh, going to face real, maybe even depression or something like that. Um, so uh, Russia will not just end it um, as it is um, as it, at this moment. And um, uh, at the very beginning, you said that um, what think tanks and what experts can 
uh, say uh, or how we can change the situation. I also wouldn't overestimate uh, the level of influence that uh, we and our colleagues have over the thinking um, in Russia, um, because uh, for the last several years, all experts and the majority of people from the expert community has been saying that uh, you know the war is not uh instrument in solving conflicts um it will just deteriorate the situation uh it's not the way out but uh we are at this point where uh the actual aggression from russian side has started in ukraine and um, um even though all of the experts were against it uh it still is happening so yeah, uh, also not positive uh, comment from me, but uh, this is, I, I'm afraid, it is reality. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, I think in the ideal world, uh, what uh, you've said would have worked uh, when two parties are in the middle of fight, uh, there is no other solution than to call other parties to become mediator between two parties. Uh, but this is only in the ideal picture, in ideal world. But we are uh, living in a world when one of the uh, parties, uh, Russia, acts irrationally. Uh, there is no um, real, you know, of course, if you take a look at the situation from the pure geopolitical point of view, this is seems logical yeah uh, russia has been claiming uh its geopolitical interest for uh, decades no one listened and here is the war but if you take a look at this situation from rational point of view uh, you would see that uh moscow acts irrational uh the effect the negative effect of uh, its actions in ukraine are horrible all of the you know uh, actions that tens of millions have been put into development of Russia for the last 30 years are now completely diminished. Uh, Russian economy uh, is being closed as um, it has never uh, been before. Uh, we really don't know what is the uh, real negative effect on Russia's economy. We don't know how the uh, domestic population is going to react in several months when uh, the economic situation will hit hard. Uh, we still don't know all of these, you know, uh, uh, negative. We don't know what is the uh, level of crisis that Russia is going to face uh, for sure. Um, and when uh, Russia acts so irrationally, it's impossible to manage that uh, Russia will be able to, um, you know, come to any rational solution of the situation. Uh, I mean, it's gone so far in this direction that there is no way out out of it. And no one, um, I want to highlight it, no one has any influence over thinking of, um, um, you know, Moscow right now. Um, and I, I just think that this is what happens uh, when uh, too much power is concentrated in one hands and uh, when a decision-making process uh, is uh, consolidated uh, around very narrow circle of people and at the same time when uh, they have uh, lack of um, expertise and uh, mm, there is no uh, uh, real uh, you know discussion about the steps towards this and that direction uh, this is what conclusion uh, this is what consequence of uh, this situation might be and of course uh, UN here seems to be uh, as the only uh, international organization that has to take this responsibility uh, to solve this problem. But UN for, forever has been, uh, you know, criticized for being unable to act uh, in, in this kind of situation because uh, UN was created like that uh, at the first place. It doesn't have real instrument to make big powers, um, nuclear powers to act in a certain way. And when uh, you are nuclear superpower as Russia, um, you really don't listen to what uh, UN says to you. So this is, um, again, some <laughs> negative comment from me. Sorry if, for being so 
pessimistic, yeah, but yeah. Um, I think yeah. we should be realistic here. Okay. Um, I would just, uh, I don't have any uh, kind of uh, suggestions or something that might help to end this crisis because um, I do believe that uh, the end of this crisis is in hands of uh, Moscow in the first place. Uh, but I would uh, say that it's important for um, expert community to uh, um, really keep our eyes um, open uh, on the uh, issues that are going on right now, on the uh, reasons for uh, why did, did this happen, uh, because all of this knowledge will be uh, very important when uh, we will come to a point where the new security system and uh, the new international order will be uh, starting to get designed. OK.